In 2012, scientists dropped 55 seismometers into the ocean about 70 miles off Oregon's coast. It was the beginning of an in-depth study to better understand what triggers an earthquake. Our experiment is really just the second one uh, ever. Oregon State University uh, professor John Nabulek co-led the study. The GPS uh, recorders, you know, the, they, they record it slow, the slow slip. The sensor sat along an underwater fault called the Blanco Transform Fault and recorded every single movement. And the researchers quickly learned that there was a lot of movement to record. Well, it's about uh, 8,000 or more earthquakes a year on Blanco Transform Fault. Roughly 20 small earthquakes were happening along the fault every day, but one group of the small quakes, also known as a swarm, stood out. And you can see just before that earthquake, there were these smaller events. It appeared the swarm of smaller quakes had actually triggered a big earthquake, a finding that could potentially help scientists in the future narrow down a window as to when a big quake might occur. We may be able to see to see how the big earthquakes are, are created, potentially. The scientists point out similar slow movement is happening in the Cascadia subduction zone. That's the fault scientists say could produce a magnitude 9 earthquake in our area. Yeah. So if a swarm of smaller yeah. quakes can produce a big quake in the Blanco yeah. Fault, could it do the same along the Cascadia? These researchers say yes, and they're working to better understand which of the swarms will be the one to trigger the big one. I'm sure if there is going to be a big one, most likely it's going to happen when, during this time when it's being loaded. So far, we haven't reached the uh, tipping point. So. Now the researchers say their next step is to put uh, some of these sensors onto active faults on land to see if the same kind of triggers happen there.